Happy Feast of St. George. My name is Peter St. George, and I'm a seminarian for the Diocese of Arlington, staying here at the Basilica of St. Mary's. Today we're going to talk about St. George in our new Sems on the Saints video series. So I'm really excited to get to talk to you about this saint. Obviously, my, my name is Peter St. George, so I've grown up with a great love for uh, this great martyr of the Catholic Church. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of grew up with him as, uh, as a hero, as, as this idea of courage for me. And, um, uh, you know, his story, the legends about him slaying a dragon and all this stuff. Um, this is, these were things I dreamed about as a little kid and, and you know, acted out, dressed up as St. George quite frequently. You know, cowboys on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, and St. George on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So, um, so just a little bit about St. George. Who, is, who was this man? Uh, so we don't know a ton about his life, um, but he is remembered as one of the megalo martyrs, which means great martyrs. Um, so there's a, there's a number of these early Christian martyrs who um, have been venerated in the Christian church for um, you know, close to 1,800 years now. And he's one of these, one of these great martyrs. Um, so why, why is he remembered? Because he was a Praetorian guard, so a Roman soldier, probably from Cappadocia, which is um, it's in like Asia Minor. But he, he was martyred uh, because he refused to recant uh, on his Christian faith. He refused to deny Christ. And so he was beheaded uh, at the order of the Emperor Diocletian in the year 303. And, um, you know, a courageous man like this, all sorts of legends grew up around his story. And eventually, um, by around the 11th century, we, uh, we have this legend of him going to a city that's, that's um, beset by a dragon that's been um, you know, eating people, killing people. And, and so the city has had to make offerings of sheep to the dragon, and they ran out of sheep. And so now they've had to, you know, the dragon's been demanding people. And today, the, the princess is going to be offered to the dragon in this city. And St. George arrives, and he slays the dragon, and he saves the princess. Quite a magnificent story, and five-year-old Peter loved this story. Um, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about what enables St. George to have this courage, um, uh, kind of allegorized in his fight with the dragon, but, but what it truly, um, that, that allegory of the, the story of the dragon indicates is, is his martyrdom, his witness to, to Jesus Christ. And so what enables him to do that, and then why is he doing it? What's it for? So first of all, what enables him, what strengthens George to, to go out there and give his life for Jesus Christ? So um, the virtue of courage, right? We hear this word, frequently used, probably, and um, uh, martyrdom is the supreme act of courage. It's to, to give one's life <clears throat> for the thing that one loves. So in, in the Gospels, Christ says, uh, greater love hath no man than to lay down his life for his friend. And we see St. George embodying this um, through his courage to, to be martyred for the faith. And um, you know, sometimes maybe we think of the martyrs and, and we think, uh, there's no way I could ever do something like that. How could I, you know, how could I die? Uh, how could I be willing to, to die to, uh, to be faithful to Christ? That's just beyond my strength. And that's, that's true. It's beyond the strength of St. George. Um, it's a supernatural act. So grace is what is allowing him to do this. It's, it's giving him um, strength far beyond human nature. So that's the first thing. What enables him is it's supernatural courage. It's grace courage. And then the second thing is um, he's been working at this probably his whole life. His father um, is remembered. St. George's father is remembered as a, as a martyr as well. So he probably grew up with um, an idea of a courageous father who is willing to die for his faith, who would rather uh, die than, than abandon Jesus Christ. And so he had this idea early on in his mind, probably, of, of what courage was. And then, um, rather than just going straight from there to this final act of courage, he probably cultivated cur a great virtue of courage through small acts of courage, little things that, that he was doing to, to build up his, his courage, his moral strength, in a sense, witnessing to his friends that he was 
a Christian, being willing to talk about Christ to, to people who maybe didn't, uh, didn't know Christ or uh, were openly antagonistic towards a Christian. Um, so these small little acts that are going to cost you something either socially or um, can, in terms of comfort or convenience, but he builds up courage by making these small little acts of, of courage so that when he finally gets to the end of his life and the emperor demands that he reject Jesus Christ, he can courageously say, I would rather die than reject Christ. So that's what enables his martyrdom. But why? What's it for? What's the, what's the reason, what's the importance of witnessing to Christ? I think witness is the key word there. So martyr is, is what we call someone who dies for the faith, but it comes from the Greek word which just means to witness, like a legal, a legal term of, of a person who would go to court and act as a witness. And so we see that, uh, we see that George, he's witnessing to Christ, to the, the divinity of Christ, that Christ is his savior. And a witness always has someone he's witnessing to, right? So in a, in a court, you're witnessing to the jury or the judge or, or the prosecutor, whoever. So who is George witnessing to? I think this is where the, the allegory, the legend about the dragon helps. There's a, a couple of people maybe that he's witnessing to. First of all, the dragon. He goes out and he confronts the dragon and it's clear that he is, he is going to do battle, he's going to slay the dragon. So the dragon represents Satan, obviously. And so the Christian has to witness to Satan that Christ is the king of the world, not Satan. Second, we have the people of the city. We can imagine that maybe they represent the people of the earth. And so they're beset, you know, they're plagued by Satan, the dragon. So the people of the city are, are, are plagued by, by evil, the forces of evil. And George, the courageous Christian, comes and he says, there's something greater than this. There's something more powerful than the dragon. So he witnesses to the people that Jesus is more powerful than Satan. And then third, he witnesses to the princess that he saves, right? And she, I think, represents the church. Um, so we always, we always speak of the church in the feminine uh, because Christ describes the church as his bride. And so George, this Christian, this, this sort of altar Christ, this other Christ, altar, altar Christus, comes and he says, uh, I'm going to conquer the dragon. I'm going to fight the dragon. I'm going to protect uh, the bride of Christ, the princess. Um, and then finally, we know that George, in witnessing um, against the dragon to the people of the world and to the church, he's especially witnessing to Christ, saying in his death, my Lord, I would rather die than abandon you. So uh, these are just some thoughts on St. George. He's one of my favorite saints. He's got some fantastic images, um, great icons and, and great paintings um, of him slaying the dragon. Um, so I hope that this will help you uh, grow in devotion to this great saint. And I hope you have a blessed feast of St. George. God bless.